Hi, and welcome to this fifth lecture on SumPy. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about simplifying expressions. So we've seen expressions now, and in the previous video, Stina showed you how to work with equations. But for this video, we're taking a look at simplifying expressions. So mathematical expressions can often be simplified, and this you have to do manually for the most cases in SumPy. So I'm going to teach you some of the most important ways of simplifying expressions. So here you can see some of the functions we'll be working with, and you'll also recognize two of them. This is the sp factor function, sp expand. Stina has told you about these previously, but I'll go through them again and add some extra functionality to them. So first of all, let us just import some as sp as usual and define two symbols x and y. So first of all, let's just repeat what we already know. So let's say that we have a polynomial, let it be x squared plus 5x, and then finally plus 6. So here you can see the polynomial. And Sina told you that you can factor polynomials with the factor method. So I can do poly.factor, and here we get the factored version. And again, if I want to expand them, let's say that I again save this to the poly variable, then I can expand the polynomial again by just referencing poly and then doing the expand method. So now I've expanded the polynomial again. So this is just repetition. The thing is that you can use the expand method for other expressions than polynomials. So let's start with an example of exponential terms. So say that I have sp exp for the exponential function, and I have x plus y here. So let's just print this, looks good. But I can use the expand method here to expand the terms as much as possible. Similarly, if I have a trigonometric expression, so let's say that the expression is sp dot cos, so the cosine function, and then let's add the sine function of y. And let's take this whole thing here to the second power. And then let us subtract again, let's say cosine x squared. So here we have the expression. Let me just assign this to a variable called trig. And again, just print it out. So here we have our expression, and I can now expand this to simplify the terms. So again, I just use trig dot expand, and there we go. So now this sum to the second power has been expanded, and you can see that actually there were some constellation happening because you ended up with a cosine squared term here that was again subtracted afterwards. So sometimes expanding terms is a great way to simplify them. But the thing is, sometimes you want to avoid simplifying everything in an expression. Sometimes there is like only one thing you want to expand, while the rest you want to stay static. And this you can do with optional arguments in the expand method. So let me here make an expression involving both exponential functions and trigonometric functions. Actually, let me just copy this thing here. This is an exponential expression. Looks good. And then let's just add the trigonometric expression here. So here you can see a big nice expression. Let's call this trig and exp and just have it also printed out here for us. So I can expand everything like we have done previously just by calling trig and exp and then the expand method. So here you can see that it's expanded, but say that I only wanted to expand this trigonometric terms because then I get this great cancellation, but I don't really want to expand e to the power x plus y into these factors. So if I only want to expand, so sorry, here it should be expand. If I only want to expand the trigonometric terms, then what I can do is to take my expression, this is trig and exp, I can call the expand method on it, and inside here I can set power exp equals false. And if I run this, you can see here that the trigonometric stuff was expanded on, but the exponential terms was not. In the description, I'll give a link to all the optional arguments you can put into the expand method. Now I want to look at two rather simple functions. This is the functions cancel and apart. So these are methods for both simplifying rational functions. Functions that are essentially polynomials in the numerator and the denominator. So here's it maybe a bit more clear. The cancel method will take any rational function, that means a function on the form p of x over q of x, where these are polynomials, and factor it so that the polynomials have no common factors. So to see this in action, let's first define the polynomials. So p should be x to the third plus 10 x to the second plus 31 x plus 30. And then q should be x to the second power plus 12x 
And then finally, plus 35. And if this looks really specific, then it's of course because I've chosen them from before so that they factor nicely. And now we can form our fraction, which is P divided by Q. So let's also print it out. And here you can see the fraction. So this is maybe a bit more concrete than this thing here. Here we have P, this polynomial, over the polynomial Q, which is this polynomial. And as you can see, SumPy doesn't really do any factoring by default here. So the thing is, if we want to do factoring, then we actually have to do it ourselves. So here what we can do is to use the cancel method. So then I take my fraction and I call cancel on it. So now the common factors have been cancelled, so this is a simple and just really convenient function. You'll also notice that I mix the words function and method. This is, as Stina has told you previously, that in SumPy most of the methods are also functions. So instead of calling dot cancel here, what I could also do is to do sp dot cancel instead, and that does the same thing. Secondly, we also have the apart method, and this is a bit related. So the apart method will perform what's called a partial fraction decomposition of a rational function. This is something that's really useful for integrating a function. So first for defining the polynomials, I'll just copy this because I can just use the same ones, just so we have them still on the screen. And again, it's equally easy to use the apart method. We just take our fraction and then use apart. The name apart is because you essentially split it apart into different terms. So now if I run this, you get this expression here. It's kind of interesting that this term here is actually the same as this term, and it's also actually the same as this term. So both of these are different simplifications of this rational function here. This is really convenient if you want to get it in the lowest level form in a sense, while this is really convenient, say, if you want to integrate it afterwards. Integrating this function is a lot more simple than integrating this function here. So that's two kind of helper methods. So just to so don't lose count, we have the expand and factor method for expanding and factoring. We also have the cancel and apart method for dealing with these rational functions. And finally, we have the general simplify method. So the simplify method is this general purpose simplification method in SumPy. It is definitely most versatile, so you can use it on almost anything, but on the other hand, it's also pretty slow and it's the most unspecific one. So let's first of all define a massive expression here. And let me just paste this from somewhere else because it's not that interesting to see me type it out. So here we have the expression and I can just print it out for you. So it's nothing we haven't seen before. It's like sine and cosine and some exponential terms here. In this case, the general simplify method will actually work pretty fine. So if I do my expression and then simplify, then I get this. So for many of these things, it doesn't do anything. So it doesn't do anything to the cosine, doesn't do anything to exponential terms. But this thing here, it rewrites as sinus of 2x plus 1. So in its opinion, this is the most simplified thing you can get. So if you just want a really quick simplification, then you should definitely try simplify. If you need more fine tuning, then I would suggest to use a more specialized method. But typically for me, if I have an expression, this is my first go-to for a method that can simplify it. So that's really it for this video. I highly encourage you to just try a few expressions, write up something like this, and try the different simplification methods and see how they work. They're really convenient, will make your life a lot easier when working in SumPy. In the next video, we're actually going to look at substituting in values. So for instance, in this expression here, how do we evaluate this expression in, for instance, x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2? So this is something Stina will teach you in the next video. So if you like the content we're providing, then we're always grateful if you would like the video and subscribe. Thanks, and I hope to see you soon.